I think most other years, Seattle will get maybe a dusting one or two days throughout the year. But um, I personally have never seen uh, the inches and inches that we had down in the downtown area with all the hills and all that. Some of the drifts that developed were taller than semis and caused us to close the roads because it was just unsafe and we couldn't stay on top of it with the north winds and the sub-zero temperatures, causing highways that have never been problematic before to be problematic now. A lot of the highways that we typically don't have to worry so much about, the drifts were so high that they were over semis. Semis were getting stuck. It's getting families home safely. It's getting the moms and dads home together every night. It's keeping the truck drivers rolling, keeping the, the products moving. If the tires aren't spinning, they're not making money. So we gotta keep those roads open for everybody. There's times where we can hardly see anything because when we're plowing, the snow always has a tendency to come up over the plow and hit our windshields in a way that makes it very hard for our windshield wipers to keep up with. I mean, as much as it's fun to go out and plow snow and like actually, you know, use the equipment that we set up every year for these trucks, um, it's really nice to not work such long hours and be able to go home and relax and not look outside and be like, oh, there's four more inches of snow. <laughs> We don't get snow days. When the snow comes, that means that we get to work longer hours and be away from home. It changes your perspective on snow, for sure. <laughs> for example, I had one lady who was following me in a plow, was going to the convenience store, and I took a left, and she wanted to go straight, continuing on a different highway, continued to drive on the road, and um, ended up getting stuck in a snow drift. I came across her later when I came back from my route. By her getting stuck in this drift, it puts me behind because I can't actually plow the road around her. And um, we had to get tow trucks there to get her out. So it sets everything back as far as progress when snow's accumulating on the roads. When the snow like that comes in, we all plan for it and everybody moves a different shift. So we get 24 hour coverage out on the highway and we overlap a little bit at the change of shift so we can talk about any problems or what the roads look like and we're all working 12 hour shifts making sure things are clear a lot came in quick I and mean, when you go right through an area and you treat it and plow it and then you come back through after chopping your load back off and there's a whole nother you know 10 inches on the road or it seems anyway it's just i just did this if there's snow there you know we're here we're, we're not taking days off and Everybody realizes that, and you know, even if they had scheduled something, you know, everybody's coming in anyway, because that's that's the main point why we're here is to keep that road open. It's kind of weird having to change when dinner is, or you know, only getting to see the daughter for, you know, an hour or two before I have to go to bed in order to get up and do it all over again. I don't, I don't have as much home time, but uh, no, we it's it's what the job is. It's what we do. I got a call from State Patrol that someone had driven off the road and rolled their SUV on 525, which is one of the highways that I help maintain on Whidbey Island. And, uh, you know, I had just been through there and treated it. So, you know, it, it needs time for the sand and salt to work to clear the road. And, you know, everybody had been getting around fine. And by the time I got there, it had warmed up enough to where the road was completely barren wet. And it's just my thought that if that person didn't feel comfortable in the snow and had waited or uh, slowed down, they would have been fine like everybody else was doing. But trying to get too fast to their destination in that kind of condition just isn't worth it. I actually, you know, I think sometimes it's harder on our families. Uh, you know, we put in 12 hour days when you add it all up, you're actually only at home maybe six hours and that includes trying to get sleep and everything. So uh, I got to give a lot of, a lot of credit to my, to my wife that makes it possible for me to do that sometimes. Because, you know, all, when you're on 12-hour days, that's all you do is you work. But, you know, it's just it's part of the job. It's all hands on deck, and it's just what needs to be done when, uh, when Mother Nature hits us hard like that. Um, another problem is, is in heavy snow, the windshield wipers will start to plug up with snow. So you might only go a mile, and then you got to stop, and you got to get out of the cab. And a lot of time, you know, it's cold and wet out there, and you got to slap the windshield wipers to get them clear so they work again. And a lot of times at night, you want to be in a safe location. Uh, you don't want to try to do it when you're on the main line itself. You try to get off at a ramp, so you at least have a little bit of safety, not getting hit. Same thing on the day shift. 
But it was I've never seen that in all the years I've been here. I had people pass me on both sides, one in the shoulder on the right side and one on the shoulder in the median. It was just crazy. <laughs> it seems like when push comes to shove and we have a storm like this, it's all about teamwork. And I enjoy seeing that because everybody pulls their weight. I mean, there wasn't a single person that wasn't working during that week and a half. It was all hands on deck. Everybody came in the night shift. Some of those guys weren't real happy, but they came in and did it just like the day shift. A lot of guys weren't happy working 12 hours, but you know, they came in and did it and everybody pulled together. And because the fact that we all worked together to get the job done, we made it through it and got it done. And I, I think we did a really good job. Be prepared for this inches and inches and inches of snow. Uh, be prepared to take it slow. Be pre prepared to have extra time, leave earlier, you know, give yourself extra time to get wherever you're going if you have to go out. And with that extra time, don't be so aggressive, slow it down. Drive a little bit under the speed limit or a lot in certain cases. Get to that, get to your destination safely. The public, the traveling public was great. Let me say that. I stayed over on a boat in Eagle Harbor because these boats were all full. You're where you could sleep on board. Mm -hmm. So there was two of us that packed bags, the overhead and myself, and stayed on the Kitsap for two nights. It all came at once. It just, we had one extreme to the other from wind. Wind's our biggest killer, especially up north, up by Tico. It comes off that Tico mountain and there's nothing we can do with it. Mother Nature wins every time with that one. Just the amount of snow and the short amount of time we've gotten. When you get short amounts of snow and then they get crusted over, warms up, they're not a problem, but we've got dumped on and it never got warm enough to crust anything over. So it all moves every time the wind blows. It moves one way, the wind changes moves back the other way. Uh, it gives us all a sense of pride to be able to get people down the road as best we can uh, with, as, with as much help as we can possibly do so because we all have families on the road and we want them to be you know, as safe as we possibly can. The frequency of our storms and the amount of snow per storm event, uh, <clears throat> it didn't allow us to really catch up, get everything cleaned off before the next event showed up. Sub uh, freezing temperatures for so many days in a row. We had the big Arctic blast coming down from the north and it didn't, it never allowed for the snow to melt. The north winds, we've had significant amount of north winds that were causing a lot of drifting situations where it's moving several million cubic feet of snow onto the roadways and we're having a hard time keeping that clear. There's been really no break from the cold temperature, so we've had no melting, which would lock down the snow and uh, confine the drifting to a minimum. But the most unusual thing we had with these storms was the north winds. Uh, high winds up to you know, 50 plus miles an hour on our ridge areas, a lot of blowing snow, and we actually had areas that we haven't had issues before were actually drifting. So we had several road closures this month due to the drifting snow and the amount of the blowing snow. Slow down. There, there's so many drivers out there that you can tell are driving way too fast for conditions. You know, we're out there, we're, we're trying to get you home to your families. We want to get home to our families too. So just slow down, drive safe, and be careful. Uh, we shift resources from area to area, um, even different regions. Um, in, the, in the last storm, the South Central region uh, faced quite a few snow drifts and they had to close down highways. We shifted a lot of our personnel to the east side um, on uh, State Route 14 to help them out. And in turn, Vancouver shifted some of Area 1's resources over to our section to help us during the snowstorm as well. Um, even though you're just one guy in a plow truck, um, w without the team, we wouldn't be able to be out there. Um, out here in Southwest region, we have very talented mechanics in our temp department that keep these trucks running. Without them, they wouldn't be able to run. Our uh, traffic management center, they keep us informed, up to date on all the things that are going on in our region. I'm also coordinating with all of our maintenance crews uh, while they're out de-icing, snow plowing, where our crews are at, we're monitoring all that stuff. Trying to get um, through all the phone calls, um, all the radio traffic, trying to make sure we know where our maintenance crews are at. Our challenge was to make sure we were getting the same information that was coming in and keep that message consistent with all the information going out, whether it's inside our own department or out to the public. That was a huge challenge. If we have ice, snow, 
they will be prepared or they can stay home and stay safe. Here at the Olympic Region Traffic Management Center, it's our responsibility to stay in contact with maintenance, state patrol, and other agencies to ensure that the roadways are clear for motorists. Of course, our number, uh, the number of calls increased to our office as we receive calls from the public or the state patrol. We take those calls and we call it into the appropriate storm management center for response. Uh, whether it's a tree in the roadway, ice on the roadway, whether we need to plow, respond to a collision, that sort of thing. The only, the only way I can explain it to you is that we would be inundated to the point where we would not be able to respond um, in a timely fashion. There's just no way we'd be able to keep up with it. It's definitely an all hand situation. It takes a lot of coordination, multiple agencies working together. And for us, you know, this is what we do. It's what we're hired for. You know, if you go and look in our SOG, our standard operating guide, it says storm management center. We have a section. It's all about the winter and it's employees should expect 12 hour shifts, adjusting shifts. And that's what we expect to do. There were 12 hour shifts. There were 15 hour shifts for wow. some. So it was, it was a, a long shift. We have a great team here. Our office staff, uh, you pick up the phone, they're so reliable. They know their teammates are sick and they know that this is what they were hired to do and you don't really realize how tired you are during something like this because you're just constantly moving. Knowing that you're helping makes all the difference and that's, that kind of gives you an energy boost too. But I mean, at the end of the day, when things finally start to slow down, that's when it hits you how tired you are. 19 years, I've never seen uh, this amount of uh, snow that fell, you know. We had a crew that was going around and responding and cleaning up of branches that was falling onto the lane. Plus, you know, we tried to plow it off safely as we can, you know, with a plow truck. But for the most part, we had a couple of guys going around and cutting with a pole saw and, you know, cleaning as we went. It's a team effort and, the, you know, the participation from everybody from the uh, lowest ranking employee all the way up to the manage management. Uh, we have our snow and ice plan and everybody's brief on that plan and we follow the plan mm -hmm. and that's how we succeed. Our guys are unique, you know, they're very uh, disciplined and you know, they're, they, they multitask a lot, you know, and they're used to that and it could be in a snow or ice operation, it could be any other operation that we deal with throughout maintaining the uh, our roadway system we multi-function but we have to do it in a safe and safe manner 0809 and and i think it was uh 15 they were all about horrible winters this one's a little worse in its own way they're all each a little different it seems, seems to me there's way more wind and then it, it just before we get a little let up between them and this one is this one right after the other and it's pretty brutal at times. We had the grader out there and uh, we're trying to open, you know, change the road from one lane to two lanes like it's supposed to be and, and it, it was blowing in in 20 minutes after we were there. You couldn't even tell we were there and we moved a lot of snow. The wind comes roaring down Tico Mountain and there's nothing but wheat fields on it. So there's nothing to slow it down. It just blows right out of those fields over right into the, you know, right into the cut, fills in the road, and there we are. I asked one guy uh, that we pulled out, I go, well, what, well, me and a state patrolman, I said, uh, what, what possessed you to drive in this kind of weather? Oh, it was okay at home. I go, where do you live, Tico? So he's three miles away. It's fine in town, but you get out there and it doesn't, so that's how that is. We spend a lot of time in the left lane plowing snow and slush and the, if it's throwing your cars around, obviously it's going to throw the trucks around also. So give us some room out there. And, um, slow down, give us some room because we're just trying to make the road safer for them. Uh, we had a lot of a lot of blowing snow. There was only an inch or two of snow on the ground, but it just kept blowing real fine snow across the road and freezing, and you couldn't get it off there quick enough. And then yeah, you had two inches of just glare ice on the road. We've helped a little bit with Wash Tuckna on 261 and Highway 21. Um, but most of that was post enclosures and then trying to help them keep it open for a few days. But it, you know, most time on 90 or 395, we don't get the luxury of closing the road unless it gets really, really bad. I've, I haven't seen it in 15 years closed. So it's just expected that you keep going and keep the road open, which 
is challenging in itself. We were, you know, making plans for spring sand removal and that kind of stuff. And then February hit and, uh, you know, the outlook looked great for the month of February. And then all of a sudden it changed rapidly and we got nailed pretty hard. So, um, overall, I mean, it's, it's an average winter on snowfall. It just came all in a couple of weeks. Hi, this is John with WSDOT Avalanche on Snoqualmie Pass. Looking back at February, we had quite a bit of snow, 118 inches for the entire month. That's nearly three meters, which is all the way up here for the, for the month. And then during the closures on, on I-90, we had a one day and a three day record for snowfall. One day of 32 and a half inches, 80 centimeters, just right about here. And uh, a three day record of 68 inches, just a, a little less tall than I am, that much snow in three days. There is a day and that was the 20th which was two weeks ago Wednesday and our snowfall really was light it was like a half inch of snow at the most but it just kept freezing on top of it and packing down so no matter what we did we couldn't break the ice it just continued until about 11. Um, cars were of course doing 70 Semis, of course, were doing 70. You know, we had a lot of guardrail damage that day. We're out there for the safety of the public and we're out there for the safety of ourselves as well. So I want people to realize it. You know, there's a lot of people out there working that have families that, you know, are counting on them to come home. And we also have families that are on the road. For, for us now, we have an aging fleet where it's getting a lot older. And with that going on, we have to um, with the storm hitting on the weekend and a lot of parts are hard to come by, we were stealing parts off of trucks that were sitting in the yard that are not snow and ice equipment. We were taking parts off here in the yard, taking them out to the area so they had trucks that uh, they could run. Um, anything we could do to keep these trucks rolling down the highway, that's what we did. If these trucks break down, they're not breaking down in the shop, they're breaking out on the highway and they're getting out. I mean, you're looking at guys laying in three or four inches of snow with hydraulic oil dripping in their face fixing these trucks, making sure that they're going to run down the highway. And driving to these areas with snow and ice all over the highway, these guys did a great job. We have a really experienced crew and they tore, they did a beautiful job. I had mechanics calling me saying, I got three trucks down in my area, I'm going to, I want to go to work. I want to get back in there. And so that's what we did. We got back out and went to work and uh, we, each area was calling other areas, looking for parts. If they needed plow bits, they were calling here. We were calling each other, getting parts where we needed them. We were running mechanics out of um, some areas to run parts to Aberdeen, to, to Port Angeles, whatever, whatever we could do to, to make sure we could get that truck back on the highway.